So you might be in the market for a new battery operated string trimmer. Are you looking for one that spins clockwise or counterclockwise? Does that matter to you? Are you looking for one that runs 0.095 or 0.080 line? Does that matter? Are you going to do ditch banks or are you just trimming around your yard? Does runtime make a difference? Do you want a 2.5 amp hour battery or a 5 amp hour battery? We're going to answer all those questions for you. We're going to look at this Toro 60 volt string trimmer, but we're going to really dive into what this unit has and what you might be able to find out there. Go through everything so you're educated while you're in the market. Stay tuned. Before we dive too deep, this is Toro's Flex Force 14 or 16 inch 60 volt string trimmer, model number 51830. It is a brushless string trimmer, so you do get a little bit more runtime and reliability out of that. It's a two speed model, and to assemble it, it comes with an Allen wrench that is a four millimeter. This comes in two pieces. The head is at the string trimmer end and you have a junction in the middle. This junction has a small pin that will lock itself into place and hold it there, but realistically this one bolt is going to squeeze down and hold these two together precisely so that this pin is really only there to allow you to tighten that bolt up. This junction is metal. It does work well. Uh, it's not going to be one that I'd want to take apart and put together all the time because you're going to stress the wires that are in between here eventually. Uh, but it does work well if you want to take it apart once a winter and put it back together, you could. From there, you're going to assemble the handle. This handle is going to go on this tube in any position up or down so that you can feel comfortable using it. That's going to depend a lot on your height. So while you're setting this up, adjust it up to where it fits for you. So this model is 14 or 16 inch cut. So immediately take your cutter that's down here for your string, flip it around so that it's in the 16 inch swath. While looking for string trimmers these days, some sort of easy load head is really what to look for. It doesn't necessarily have to be powered I think that might be going a little too far as something else to break, but something that will load up real easy is pretty much standard. So on this model, all you have to do is line up two arrows and then feed the string through one of the eyelets. It will curve around and then come out the other eyelet. Now you'll see I have a little pick in my hand because I was expecting this string not to come completely out of the eyelet since I'm running a completely different steel 0.090 string. Helpful hint here, if you're putting new string in and you have some time, take the 10 foot section that they recommend here, throw it in water overnight. It will help the ends from stop fraying and it will also help it not to break. This stuff likes to be wet, believe it or not. So all you have to do from there is just turn it in. This is very simple. Something that you should look for these days because a lot of people don't like to load string the old way where you strung it around and had to push things in and it was, it could be difficult. This is very, very simple and easy to do. Next, if you are really into string trimmers or into your lawn and you've had straight shafts before that have been gas, when you move over to battery, some will change directions on you, which can mess you up. This unit here is a clockwise turning head. So most straight shaft gas engines had a counterclockwise turning head. That's something that I like counterclockwise and I got used to. So every time I'm using this in my head, I have to think about what direction to walk so I'm not spraying grass into the landscaping or on myself. The guard on this is nice and small. I prefer a small guard over a large guard because it allows you to go around trees and get into different areas. Next, we want to look at runtime. This is a two speed unit and Holding on to the safety and running the variable speed trigger is very simple. I don't understand two speed units because if you came from a gas, you had one speed and you used the trigger. If you're used to battery operated stuff, you might rely on that two speed to give you a little bit more runtime where you can put it in speed one, which is going to be slower and limit you to how fast this string trimmer head is going to spin. There's no gearing here. This is all just done 
through how much voltage and everything else is going through the motor. Speed 2 is going to give you the full amount. And while I can't find specs on this, I'm going to guess that this string trimmer spins at about 6,000 RPM. A typical straight shaft gas engine one is going to spin at about 10 to 11,000 RPM. So you're giving up a little bit there, uh, but at the same point, if you're not used to commercial models, you probably won't see a lot of a difference when you move over to this model. And I'm not saying this isn't used for commercial, but it has a few things that kind of throw me to more of the homeowner side. From here, we want to look at the battery. This guy comes with a 60 volt, which is actually 54 volts. That's why they use a 60 volt max. Um, then it's a 2.5 amp hour. So what does that mean? In this case, and in most string trimmer cases, if you're running somewhere close to a 60 volt system with a 2.5 amp hour battery, you're gonna get somewhere around 20 minutes of runtime. And when I say runtime, that's gonna be from the minute that you walk out of your garage and start trimming until the battery dies. That's not 20 minutes of full all on trimming. This is probably like if you just said, I'm going to take a ditch bank and start cutting it down and going through everything, you probably got 10 minutes on this battery. This is one thing that I don't like to see on string trimmers. I like to see a five amp hour battery because that will double it. Most people can get their whole yard done. If they have a large yard in 40 minutes, 30 minutes, and a five amp hour battery will complete that without issue. Complete. 2.5, it's 50-50 depending on if it's the springtime, if it's fall time, if it's rained, if you haven't done it in a while, a lot of things like that. So a smaller battery is lighter for somebody and they like that, but less runtime. In this case, with this charger, it takes about 40 minutes to charge the battery. It does have a fuel gauge on it. That fuel gauge starts up, lights up all four lights, and then it drops itself back down to show you how many bars are on it. A lot of fuel gauges are a little bit different on batteries. So from there, we want to look at power. And power is going to be determined by someone who is using it in their experience. Someone who's not used to a lot of power may give you different opinions. Uh, looking at this compared to a lot of battery operated trimmers that we have looked at, this has what I would call good power, an eight out of 10 when I compare it to many of the others. We didn't have cutouts. We didn't see any of that. We didn't see any time where we overheated it. Uh, it was great as far as usefulness. And if you were gonna use this to trim up a ditch or trim up a section that has some taller grass, you could get in there without issue. The longer grass doesn't wrap around the head, which we've seen in the past uh, because of how slow some of these battery operated units will spin. Sometimes it'll just grab onto longer grass and just wrap it up and bind it. The reality here is we're talking about what you should be looking for, what you want to be looking for in a string trimmer. And I just wanna dive into this unit here, complete top to bottom and just reiterate some things and give you my opinion on this string trimmer as it sits. First, I really like that we have a metal head down at the bottom. There is no plastic here. Uh, it's probably some sort of aluminum or magnesium. There's no vent holes down here. So if you are in water, it's not gonna allow any water to get into that brushless motor. That also means to me that I don't see a lot of heating issues because they've designed it so that it can get covered in grass and not overheat. That's perfect because this will get completely covered in grass over time. And if people don't clean it off all the time and it does cover some of the vents, then that could be an issue. As far as when I see 16 or 14 inch trimmer, that always scares me. In this case, I was happy to flip it over to a 16 inch, put a thicker line on it and have this thing run flawlessly. The line that comes with it, it says it is a 0 0.095 line. It didn't look like it to me. I thought it was 0 0.080. I immediately took it out. I said, I want to show you guys how to change the, the string trimmer headline anyway. So let's put in something that's a little more robust and go at it. So if you use a thinner line, it even says it on the box, it will up the runtime. Now, per the box, I should have got 30 minutes of runtime with 0 0.095 line. 
a little more education, there is a ton of different styles of line from square to twisted to round to super quiet line that they have out now. I'm just using round. That could have brought my run time down a little bit because round is obviously harder to run than any of the other ones as far as aerodynamics. Being 6'4", this is a little bit of a shorter string trimmer than what I would like. Uh, I measured it up against the one I normally use at home and it is eight inches shorter. I don't know why, uh, but I think it would be a lot more comfortable for someone who is six foot and under. Just an opinion, I would still use this, no issue, but I know a lot of you guys out there make comments to me and say, hey, how is it for being taller? And I don't like, you know, that I'm on an angle and not flat. You know, it's 50-50. You can see the video and how it looks and what I'm doing. And it does float well over the grass. If you're just cutting a large area and like I have a tree that I can't get the lawnmower around, so I have to float cut most of it. It did that just excellent. Trigger on this is one of the best that we've seen out here. I love the long safety, the long trigger, the variable speed is excellent. I don't care for it being two speed, but I don't think that you know changes anything with me because I'll just leave it on speed two and use the variable speed trigger. Again, your results on that may vary. The rubber handle is nice. Everything here works well. And as far as the 2.5 amp hour battery, that for me um, on my yard would be great as long as I'm not trimming all the way around the fence or dealing with any of the ditch bank. If I have to deal with that, I would probably grab the battery out of the mower, which is a six amp hour, and roll with that. It would be a little bit heavier, but I would get my run time. And the way that I have this handle, it doesn't balance anyway because I have it so far up. The six amp hour battery would probably help to balance this out a little bit more, but that's because of where I have the handle. Again, your results may vary, you know, with that. Charging time is great. There's a fan inside the charger that keeps the battery cool. I think there's a lot of good things that are happening there. It might not be the fastest charger that you'll see, uh, but I do like that there is at least a little bit of safety there. A lot of the good battery chargers have a fan to keep things cool. So it's also something to look at. Overall, I like this. I wish it was a little bit longer. I wish it came with a five amp hour battery, but for the system that you're getting, for a lot of people, especially like a city lot, you're gonna be really happy with this. Great power, especially if you use a little bit different line that might be twisted in, or the, the stock line that comes with it is probably very good. I get it in my head to change the stock blades or lines on just about anything that comes in this place and uh, test them out with something different just to give you a little bit different perspective. Either way, head change is easy for line. I like it. Either way, guys, appreciate your comments. I'll answer every one that I possibly can. I appreciate your time. Subscribe, like, have a great day.